You know those moments when you seem to hover over yourself, wanting to scream, stop, don't go there, go back. It was one of those moments. And in the next instant, I watched my world fly apart. My neat little nuclear family, husband, son, and me, torn apart in what felt like a not-so-neat little nuclear explosion. I was sitting in a counselor's office on a bleak February day. The next day, I'd be vacationing in sunny Belize. But today, I watched my marriage of 27 years to the man I'd promised to love unto eternity crumble. Trial separation, just for a while, we'll work this out. And then, we're going in different directions. Don't love you anymore, don't want to give her up. I knew it was over. Big Bang, Belize, my vacation, do I stay or do I go? My son, what will Jamie think? Who tells him my jo new job, his mom, my mom? The cars, the house, the dog, the cats. Who looks after them while I travel? Who gets the china? The new sofa we just bought. I need to call the kitchen remodeler. Oh, damn, it's almost tax season. Is that snow coming down outside? And then the reality hit, and except for that one thought playing over and over and over in my brain, there is silence. This can't be happening. For the next half hour, we negotiated an uneasy truce. I wanted to be the one to tell our son, to explain that in the years he'd been away at college, something had gone wrong, that I loved him to the moon and back, and always would, that he was my child. But in the end, I made the only decision I could. I'd travel as planned, giving my husband the space to move out. And he'd tell our son with the compassion that was part of the reason I still loved him. I went to Belize. In the luxury of isolation of Belize, I spent hours in meditation, contemplation, drawing my thoughts back from their far-flung landing spaces across my universe. I made plans, hoped hopes, dreamed big. I was even almost happy. In my mind, a theme song, a soundtrack started to take hold. At odd moments, Alone on the beach of a secluded island in Belize, I was Gloria Gaynor, belting out, I will survive. I even believed it. I came back and immediately flew 3,000 miles from home for orientation for my new job, a period of time too busy for the importance of the conversation I knew I had to have. And then I came home to reality. On my way home from the airport, I called my son, my grown-up baby boy, eight months past his college graduation, my heart, and was told he didn't want to speak to me. This time, the explosion was an implosion. I sat on the pavement in the slush and ice of a late March day in Vermont, devastated. He'd misunderstood what his dad had told him, blamed me, hadn't realized the pressure we'd been under, couldn't understand how I could have gone to Belize anyway, hadn't been told of some of the negotiations that went into keeping my soon-to-be ex and me out from under the same roof, and our agreement that his dad would explain it all, and that I had a travel schedule that just couldn't be altered. I wanted to run to him as I had wanted to run to him when he, was a, when he fell, when he was just a baby. But many miles separated us, and it was late, too late to drive to him then. I could only wait in agony for the morning. That night was longer than any I'd ever spent, as I lay alone in the house we'd all shared and wondered if I had lost everything, both husband and son. Morning came, as it always has. And in the way that weather has of mocking us, it was clear and beautiful. And so the drive through the late winter New England countryside to my son was both astonishingly beautiful and terrifying. There comes a time that we must acknowledge our children as both adults and yet still the children we raised. That we must be both parent and self in relationship to them that we must apologize to them for no longer being just mom while taking a stand for our own personhood. 
a day that we cross the boundary from parent to equal. Perhaps it is this day that mothers become adults too. I crossed that boundary that day. I apologized, yes. We talked for hours as parent and child and as adults. And finally, yes, finally, as friends. <laughs>